hello 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 so today i'll be doing this particular question called bazel all right here is my thing pen so bazel and there is some company background given over here there is some objectives that's given and then value-based management approach is given and then we've been given eva as well so that means we've got three requirements uh, which consists of value-based management approach then we have to what we have to evaluate huh? the verb is evaluate over here verb is evaluate what do we need to evaluate whether value-based management is uh, better or not so whenever i'm talking about value-based management what am i talking about i'm talking about future cash flows and creating value for shareholders right so we are talking about that whether it's that that is appropriate for bazel or not we need to talk about that and then explain to the ceo what changes bazel would need to make to its performance measurement and management system so we will need to look at how uh, in terms of measurement how data is collected and all right so we need to talk about like uh, whenever we are talking about value-based management right so we uh, look at what kind of activities are there which creates value or not we will be looking at like uh, what are the improvements that can be done to a measurement to a measure right so we need to talk about how performance measurement management system needs to adopt to value-based management approach like uh, whether it be uh improving a customer relations or whether it could be looking at redesign work right so uh, like uh, just making the chain itself efficient right so that is for seven marks and the bigger part of this question is basically from economic value for its shareholders so using appendix one right so that is uh, basically we need to do a eva calculation so for that let's look at this company background so what does bazel do it hires out plant and machinery it hires out okay so it's in the hiring out business right it's in that kind of business i'll just need to change this eraser right so it's in hiring out business so it hires out plant and machinery to small firms okay uh, who are working in construction industry okay so they basically provide them with all this heavy machinery tanks and stuff so this will be leased by small firms for doing their construction for doing their construction right and bazel senior manager including the ceo have worked in the business since it was established 30 years ago they own majority of the uh, shares okay so the senior managers own the shares own majority of it right own majority of it and during that time bazel has acquired many small plant hire business okay so it has been in the acquiring game as well acquisition as well right of the business unit which have underperformed the acquisition have either been sold on or restructured for example to increase its operating margins so it has been either sold out or restructured right and then basil has recently diversified by hiring out large items of uh, large construction firms working on major infrastructure projects okay so it has started hiring out large items to large construction firms right these projects can last up to 10 years okay so that's a so you see you see what will happen over here very very important question okay very important thing over here why have they been giving us 10 years you see i just figured it out in my mind so i'll just let you know as well so 10 years over the 10 years your uh figure could look something like uh like it's a long figure right so your revenue is tied across many years so which means your discounted figure will be very much higher right so any projects which is uh let's say finishing 10 years down the line 
then it's going to be providing you revenues across those years right and then the further away the revenue the lesser its value right as you already know so this will have implications on that okay so that's a very good important point in this case that's why this point is over here just to make us think about what value based approach okay so this is a very good point and strong growth in the economy has increased of this increase the number of large projects which has led to predicted large increases in bank interest rate so you see what's happening over here a very important clue over here so this means uh, so economy is doing well so that means if there is only let's say a uh, few amount of loans are there and then you've got all this many companies very many companies so all these are attacking like let's say they are trying to uh, get as many as cheaper interest rates right so what has they what, what has it done it has pushed up the interest rates okay so what happens when the interest rate goes up your discounting figure will go up right so whatever you're discounting by or your cost of cost of capital will go up because your debt holders will want higher interest why not right so if bank is providing them better rate why would they even uh, bother right so why would they even bother like uh, investing or investing money in our company right so why would the debt holders want to uh, hold our debt they might just sell it and then move on to bank right so basically our cost of capital will increase so that means what will happen the money which was worth which was or the projects which were which seemed feasible uh, before the rate increases may now turn out to be less feasible okay so that is very important thing and another thing is the shareholders objective is what is to maintain its historic return on roce so maintaining roce right and managers are in each business units are given the objective of maintaining net profit margins what so in business units just net profit margins only yeah so managers at individual branches are given the same objectives according to their uh, areas of responsibility okay so it's quite clear for them right it's quite clear for them so they've been used to roce as a measure uh, right so uh, they might be postponing some kind of investments and all as well so we need to talk about that probably if there is no they are not asking anything right now so so another thing is value based management approach sorry about the noise it's very noisy where i live unfortunately i don't have a quiet place as well so sorry about that uh, value based management approach so following two years of poor performance it has been suggested to ceo that bazel would benefit from adopting value based management approach so it has been suggested to the ceo uh, two years of poor performance so ceo requires advice and has said the shareholders are unsure about vvm whether it will benefit bazel and what changes the business would need to make if it were to adopt it right so shareholders are unsure huh? this is also another clue we can talk about management commitment right another all managers in the business are already clear what their objectives are so all managers in the business are clear already clear what their objectives are for example one business unit recently postponed some expensive staff training postpone some expensive staff training right why is he doing that roce on improving customer satisfaction so that will lead to what that will lead to lesser customer satisfaction right so that will in turn affect our financials right so which i believe was a correct decision one poor performance has meant we cannot afford this kind of this sort of expenditure especially as um, we have no information on what level of customer satisfaction actually are so they say that they don't have any information on level of customer satisfaction right personally i dislike change uh, but would not object to adopt 
option of EVM if it was thought to be beneficial for Bazal. Okay, so shareholders have heard that EVA is a good measure whether it will be created or destroyed a value for the shareholders, but it has yet been calculated, it has not yet been calculated. Details are in appendix one. So, okay, so the first thing is basically using the information advice to see whether Bazal has generated economic value for its shareholders so that's more about calculations part right so evaluate whether value-based approach is suitable for it or not so a value-based management right value-based management will give us a lot of advantage in this kind of company uh, and and let's see let's see right so in the first uh, requirement a and b you should have a relevant knowledge in place to be able to apply relative simple specifics of the scenario VVM uh, may should not be viewed as an important area the question serves as an important reminder that any syllabus area can be uh, examined and then syllabus area should be a, a thing right understood so EVA has been tested multiple times right so uh, the examiner is not interested in testing large number of adjustments rather on your ability to demonstrate the concept of EVA okay not large number of adjustments so you will be able to do a small number of adjustments correctly that's all they want okay and then in the context of VBM right in the context of VBM what can we do is basically uh, so first of all it's basically about definition of value based management right so basically when why do we why are we defining right over here is basically uh, we have not told we have not been told what is value based management right so value based management is what value based management is basically measured by discounting future cash flows at business cost of capital okay so value of business is basically measured by uh, discounting of cash flows right so value of business is basically discounting right by coc cost of capital right so when the returns exceed the cost of capital value will be created for shareholders when it is lower value will be destroyed basic definition right and, uh, and then second thing is so value-based management will ensure that what will happen all activities and decisions okay all activities and decisions in a business will generate or create value currently what does it do so currently what does it do so currently uh, the objective is to maintain roce at historic level but that does not necessarily create value for shareholders right currently it's not right because they are using roce so that is evaluation of current scenario evaluation of scenario plus a little bit of guidance on how vvm approach works right so what does it do it basically ensures all activities and decisions in business are actually creating value for the shareholders and currently roc will not mean that the company is creating any value right so this is particular right this is particularly so now that bazel which has diversified into hiring out large items of plant for use in uh, thing right so for use in major projects so this projects last up to 10 years right so they will talk about what so the value of money is significant as it is initial capital expenditure for the plant right so uh, whenever we are hiring out we have to buy make a capital expenditure right because uh, we have to purchase it and long term hire agreements will give acceptable roce it could give us ROC, very high return, right? But a negative NPV, hence value is destroyed, right? So the prediction of large increases in bank interest rates will give, will increase COC, which will further reduce NPV. Remember the point that I was ta talking about over here, right over here where we wanted to talk about that thing, right? So what they did, they defined it. After that, what they did, they simply... Uh, did a current evaluation and then they came up with that point regarding what uh, how uh, VBM is calculated and how 
npv affected right so npv and all and then how that gets affected right so similarly what can we talk about we can talk about this thing as well right over here remember the thing the uh, staff right so similarly what what's happening uh, business unit and branch managers what are they given the objectives for them is what so the objectives for them is basically looking at net profit margin right so which does not mean that they will be creating value right so uh, they may reduce profits uh, they may avoid activities which will reduce profits in short term right but which will hurt our long term right so that's what they talk about and then they give us a uh, thing example of staff training so with bbm so what could happen differently now let's talk about that what could happen so these are the things issues that we've highlighted right so what could happen so decisions are taken to create value for shareholders by considering value drivers very important point is to create value for shareholders using or by considering value drivers which are any factors that affect value of business right so which are any factors that affect the value of business and value drivers could be non-financial as well such as customer satisfaction remember in this case customer satisfaction which may have been improved by the postponed staff training and vvmx approach is therefore suitable for bizarre right because right now we don't know whether value is being created or not right what the, what will vvm will do it will make our decisions and activities in line so that we create value for uh, customers okay by how do we do that we basically make decisions to create value for shareholders by considering value drivers which can affect which can be any factor which could affect the value of the business right so it could it could be non financial such as customer satisfaction right which could lead to what better customer perception which could lead to better sales or market share right which could lead to retention which is basically your uh, very important thing in a business right so without retention every new customer you can't really make that much money without retention right or customer loyalty that won't happen without customer satisfaction so that is one thing right and explain how we need to adjust our performance management measurement right so how what needs what changes we need to make right in order to adopt this value based management approach right and then how performance management system so if there is performance measures and for the management how they how the management system how the performance can be managed if it were to adopt value based management right so for uh, measuring the performance first of all let's come at that so to adopt a vvm bazal need would need to have a different set of measures so not only roc that's not creating value so we need to look at eva or uh, something like uh, eva and all right so we need to look at npv as well so right now what we are doing we are just measuring from roc and net margin so eva is more suitable right so even though it's more complex to calculate and difficult to understand than existing measures eva would encourage managers to make decisions which are long term right so like what coming back to the scenario again you see how they are linking every time back to the scenario undertaking staff training right which is very important for future long term benefits so by encouraging them uh, to make such investments uh, will give a positive eva and value will be created right and then with vvm what can we do for uh, what is it what is it for uh, measurement right so what can we do for management performance as well we could provide managers with target according to their responsibility areas which is already been given but what could we do for example 
so board may have different objectives to maximize value right so by making acquisitions which create value so uh, a board may have the objective of creating value by acquisition right so a branch managers objective could be focused on non-financial such as customer satisfaction right so uh, so it could be uh, let's say a financial for board it could be non-financial for a branch managers right based on their responsibility area okay so be because of course branch managers won't be making any re decisions related to acquisitions and all of course right so it could be done that way for performance management and another thing is we need to identify value drivers okay value drivers so for that what will happen for that what will happen the uh, bazel will need accurate reliable timely information right for example it is unclear whether the performance management system is able to provide you see they talk about what current management information system right as i mentioned in the question as well earlier it could be basic right which is uh, not able to provide uh, data regarding customer satisfaction or it could not have like resources data right so such as financial investment time and training may be needed to improve management information system because time and uh, training why because currently they are only used to net profit margins and roc very basic very traditional like right so they are not using eva yet so it's very basic so what could happen managers may resist the change so there is again you see very important point over here seems very generic but it happens you know it happens in real life scenario so whenever what happens so if there is a basic things basic information system that will need upgradation then what will happen when there is a change there will be resistance right so uh, in that situation what we do what do we need to do we need to uh, basically make it clear all right so we need to discuss with them as well so that may make it a uh, more participative process and then align the organizations with uh let's say not not telling them like change overnight but slowly you know just adopting slowly because uh, resisting change is one force against the other force okay so if you push by that much the other force will also push that much okay the employees resistance will even grow louder uh, so another thing is what else so not least the C uh, ceo what do what uh, would need to happen is tone at the top tone at the top basically you see shareholders are unsure right so they need to be uh, sure about that right so that change will be there so commitment will be very much important from manage from the board as well from the shareholders as well next thing we need to do is eva calculation okay let's see so we've been given profit after tax right capital employed at the start of the year is given so what else so we've been given interest rate why have we been given interest rate is basically we first of all take in the 10 profit after tax profit right and then after that uh, what do we need to do we need to add back the interest because that has been deducted right what is that interest charge for the year was that much 15 million less what was the uh, variable loan rate of 10 percent right okay that's 10 percent and then 20 percent is the thing so 15 times 20 into 0 0.2 is our loss on tax okay it's a little bit gray area over there that's why i could not write it but yeah it's what it's 
that right so it's uh, we lost some interest over there and what is this 6040 is used for whack calculation right mm, and then we've been given depreciation so depreciation charge for the non current assets was this much right so add back that much eight six million right so probably might as well do it somewhere you know new notebook uh, dark note should be fine so yeah yeah that should be all right so might as well do it over here so uh, profit is profit is 10 million and we add interest is how much 15 million and then we um, what else less savings lost on interest is how much 15 million times 20 percent all right so that will be what three i don't know how much will that be but yeah it'll be some figure right and then we need to do add non-current assets so which is depreciation which which is going to be how much it's going to be six million and then we have a economic depreciation of economic depreciation of 14 million this will be negative okay so at the start of the period accumulated depreciation of the non-current assets exceeded at the start of the period it was already what understated so we need to increase that so that's for capital employed okay so that's for capital employed figure is what 250 million opening right and then depreciation right remember what what has happened the accumulated depreciation exceeded its accounting depreciation so it has only been reduced by some figure but it was how much 16 million it has to be reduced by so we need to reduce it by 16 okay So that is done. Okay, and then this adjustment is also done. Number five is what brought forward at the year was a provision which was made in respect which has since been repaid. Okay, so we need to reduce this provision. because we are reducing the provision which we had previously made right so we are reducing it okay and then add provision in capital employed because this much cash has been we need to add it back okay and what else there was expense of 0 0.6 for in uh, in trade magazines right so in trade magazines this led to several inquiries from new customers involved in thing uh, infrastructure process which are resulted in Brazil signing at least two contracts okay add back advertisement 0 0.6 million right how much will that be so let's check let's check with this thing as well right closing figure so that's it and then we added back the depreciation remember 10 million added back deducted 14 and then that 
brings it to 18 and then we added back the interest add interest 15 million yeah we added that back and three was the tax on that and then we deducted the bad debt provision as well remember and then six zero point six was that so we have a notepad of 9.8 remember where was that my notebook is over here so everything over here is that so minus three right so 25 25 minus 3 is what 22 plus 6 is what 28 28 minus 14 is what 14 again 14 minus this two things all right so it will be what uh, 4 5.4 so 14 minus that so 0. 0.6 and then it will be what 13 minus 5 so 3 2 8.6 is that a no pat 8.6 right or oh, 9.8 0. 0.6 what what did i do what did i do what did i do i made some mistakes okay i made some mistakes oh advertisement why did i deduct it has to be added back it had to be added back so it's what 4.2 which will be subtracted of net so that will give us 8 and then 8 dot 13 minus 4 will be 9.8 no pat is that much no pat is 9.8 so another thing i wanted to do was whack whack is basically what whack is basically your um, debt to equity ratio right so 40 percent of equity times 12 percent plus 60 percent times what's your rate what's your rate uh, 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 10 percent 10 percent times uh, 0.8 because i'm deducting for the tax thing right so that will give you what 4.8 percent plus that will be what uh, 10 will be 8 percent so 60 so i don't know how much will that be but yeah 60 percent times 0.8 eight percent so eight percent of 60 right so that's somewhat how much whack will be okay so let's just look at the answer over here so can't be bothered to get a calculator and do all that right so 250 million was that and then we deducted what what was the differential amount yeah it was in uh, 16 million and then we need to add back the provision as well okay which we did not do but we need to add that back. i think we did that as well i think so and EBA of assets is basically what 238 point thing right so our notepad uh, minus what should happen the economic value asset should be economic value of assets should be uh, we need to deduct the capital charge okay capital charge is how much basically so it's 12 percent 8 percent so that's what that comes to 8 percent and then whack will be our 9.6 percent okay and 238 so capital employed times our rate of interest which will give us a eva of negative eva okay so we can simply say eva is negative hence what has happened value has been destroyed destroyed okay you see it's very tiny marks okay they don't give you very much adjustment but you just need to know the concept only okay so tax on interest interest one marks economic depreciation one mark depreciation one mark advertising one mark and uh, what is this calculation of eva one mark conclusion and destruction of value one mark you see many people miss it but yeah it's very good thing right so difference in accumulated depreciation one marks and increase in bad debt provision one marks right so it's a very a varied kind of thing all right so changes required on uh, vvm is basically seven marks uh, general application or evaluation of evm is you see first evaluation or explanation is two marks and then application to uh, uh, bezel is four marks and then recommendation is one marks right 
recommendation is one marks so always try to remember that there should be conclusions or recommendations which will earn you one marks okay so you might not know the marking structure but it's always good to have it all right so yeah that's pretty much it for this video take care see you in the next one bye bye